This fall, Pace University football will begin its 45th year as a varsity program. Even after all this time, the Setter alumni still remember their time in Pleasantville with fond memories and leadership growth experiences as the blue and gold continue to turn the page into the future. You're a gifted athlete and uh, ready, ready to take that on. Uh, you will be challenged here today, that's for sure. Uh, I just wanted to really put together a good season, put together some good memories, and, and, and just be a good teammate and get it done for my, for my teammates. And uh, camp's the beginning of that. Going back to camp was, was fantastic. Getting, out, getting to school three weeks early, just playing football, and working out, and nothing better than it. I kind of just felt at home, uh, you know, with the, with the players and the school, even though there was horses on, on the field here at the time, I <laughs> thought that was weird, but uh, I just really felt like, hey, this place is where I got to be. When I got to camp, it was it was enlightening because the everyone was extremely nice. And the other thing that I always noticed was the older guys always kind of watched over the younger guys. I, I thought that was great. I mean, they didn't have to do that, but they kind of, right away, they were all part of the family. It was just such a cool environment. Like a lot of schools I went to, it just seemed like the guys didn't get along. Like this seemed like a very fun, like family, like everyone was boys and it just felt really comfortable. So it, for me, it was like a no brainer. Typically, you don't have that. And, and it was just a different culture here. And I think as we, as we went along year after year, we got a little bit harder. We got a little bit harder. And by our senior year, we were pretty tough on our freshmen because we wanted them to have that attitude, that chip on their shoulder when they came in. We want them to hit. We don't want them to sit there and say, oh, he's a senior, don't, don't touch him or don't hit him or whatever. No, we, we all played hard. I didn't really understand how intense college football is, regardless of the level. When I got here, it was everyone was big, everyone was fast a lot bigger and a lot faster and so I didn't understand necessarily the speed of the game but I also didn't really understand the X's and O's of it because once they put us in the meetings and started talking 100 miles an hour I couldn't write notes fast enough and you're fatigued and you're hot and at Briarcliff at the time there was no ACs and any of the things we were doing so like all of those things would wear on you. I was 150 pounds if that soaking wet. I remember getting out of the car and looking around at the dudes coming in and I'm like, what did I just get myself into? That's kind of one of the first things I remember about camp. Like, oh my God, like this is hell. and We're not even pads yet. I would have a ball, but it's not for everyone. Be prepared to uh, push yourself and be pushed. Camp is just a great experience in general. This was 1998, it was 20 something years ago. And you know, back then we did three practices a day and it, it was very different. And I remember running sprints and just being like, oh my God, I'm gonna throw up everywhere. Some of the most memorable um, points of camp was how they would, um, you know, we were very well fed throughout camp, but they would recycle this one dish. You'd have it for lunch, you'd have it in dinner, and sometimes even breakfast, and it was rice. I don't know how they made rice 10 different ways, but um, just remember the team meetings, uh, remember 5 a.m morning workouts, morning runs, um, and just, you know, bonding with the guys. At the end of camp, we always did these rookie skits. And the rookies had to perform these little short comedic plays or whatever, performances for the upperclassmen. And uh, one of, and my skit was, uh, um, I was partnered with Dwayne Allen, um, who came in, he was a freshman with me that year. Fantastic running back for base. Um, and I basically had to imitate Coach Lasardi with his whistle and his socks pulled up to like his mid-calf. And just, uh, I went on a rant about how, he ranted at us one, one afternoon during practice about how this is his team and we're gonna do things his way. And I pretty much echoed that same rant to the, to the uh, couple of freshmen I was with. So that was funny. I think coach got a kick out of it. I, I, I hope he got a kick out of it because uh, I didn't have to do any extra running after that. But that was, uh, that was fun. The Setters football program is the only Division II football program in New York State and is one of 31 across all three NCAA divisions in the Empire State. Something to be said for a college that doesn't have a football program versus one that does. So I think it's a great source of pride for, for the student body as well as the alumni. So yeah, it's great. I would say definitely for me, it was a big time family thing to you know, be close enough that all my, you know, my relatives could enjoy. You know, I'm only the second person in my family to like graduate college. 
So it was like, you know, it was a big deal to them, you know what I mean? And they, you know, they showed so much support. Like, I missed that a lot, actually. My family <laughs> was head over heels for pace football, loved it. I could remember walking to the field for a one o'clock game at like 10 o'clock in the morning, and my father was already clapping in the stands. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, I had to get my seat. So, I mean, they were just as jacked up as we were, which was pretty cool. This is a culture. It's, you know, it's bigger than just a, a game. Um, and that's one thing that I think I've realized the most in terms of my four years of playing football here. You know, you realize that you're part of a bigger family. It's the best game in the world. That's what I think. I remember one day in practice, Lamar, a big D tackle. He used to have these arm pads. Now it's, you know, we used to run the scout out my freshman year. He was the starting D tackle. We're in the huddle and I look at him. He'd be pulling cookies out of his pads, eating them. He snuck them onto the field. I said, you got brought cookies on the field? He goes, shh. I'll give you some. I don't want cookies. And then the whistle blows and we go back <clears throat> to the huddle and I look at him and he's sneaking cookies, throwing them in his mouth. Things like that again, having fun. Uh, just enjoying ourselves out there. And Brian Perrone, of course, at this point, he's a three-year starter. He's like 6'2", he's just muscles on top of muscles. And I'm just like, why do I have to get paired up against this guy? If he didn't break his leg, I probably wouldn't have gotten a chance to play. Uh, so thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe Tedeschi, my man Joe. He came in, again, Catholic school guy, Catholic school guy, similar to me. We played each other in high school and stuff. And he he came in and everybody was like, who the hell is this guy? You know, the same thing. But he backed it up, man. He was, he was another one. Real tough SOB. And um, I love him to death, man. He's a good friend. So when we were bringing in good quality players and good quality people as well. I'm thinking of Coach Lasardi, I'm thinking of Anthony Gazzillo, Ray Crumdike, Joe Tedeschi. I, that's what comes to my mind. Those guys and Lou Botticelli, if I don't say that, I'm in trouble. Lou Botticelli, another guy I want, want to give a shout out to. Um, great leader, great leader. Very good football player, undersized, not the biggest, not the strongest, not the fastest but a very, very good football player. I mean, so to be a, a linebacker in college football at Lou's size, it just speaks volume to his talent. So, uh, you know, I, I know from a numbers perspective, you're probably not gonna see him all over the, the numbers, but he was a real leader, real locker room leader. Um, you know, everyone looked up to Lou. Coach just already comes running. From wherever, he, I don't even know where the hell he was. He just comes running and he gets in my face. And he's like, what's wrong, Lou Botticelli? What's wrong, Mr. Captain, Mr. Big man on campus. <laughs> I mean, Billy to this day, Billy, Billy Yofo calls me BMOC, big man on campus. He's like, can't handle it? Can't get it done? What's your problem? <laughs> and I was just like, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. He's like, I hope so. <laughs> that was just one of those things. And you know, because when you're screaming at you, you're not loving it, but you can see everybody like laughing around you, right? Like, yeah, now Louie's getting it. Now Louie's getting it this time. So not only did Anthony beat us, and then he wound up coming in, uh, he transferred over here to Pace. Um, he wound up working in as a starter his junior year, um, and then started as a, as a senior. Um, you look at his numbers, and if you project that out, if he was a four-year player here, he would be at the tops of most of those passings. The feeling I got from being around Coach Sardi, being on campus, just experiencing playing against them was was great. And that's a credit to, to Coach Lasardi. It's a credit to the to the players that were there, kind of how they carried themselves. Um, you know, I just th thought it was it was better to come to pace. He was probably like the best player I played with. Um, offensively, the quarterback, the leader of the team, super smart, knew everything. Um, the chemistry was awesome. Like we had a couple plays where uh, you know, we looked at each other, you know, looking at the defense, reading the defense, we were able to make eye contact and like smile because we knew we had it. And like, you know, there's two specific ones where we hit that play for touchdowns and we knew it before it happened. Like, that's awesome. First thing we're doing is I'm introducing you to Ray. Shook his hand. I mean, Ray's, Ray's in my wedding and, you know, I've been very close with, very close with Ray. We went out the night before. We weren't supposed to. I slept over somebody's house. I was in the top bunk. I forgot where I was. I had to go to the bathroom, I fell out of the top bunk, hit my head on a snack tray. I have a scar right here. And my buddy, one of my best friends to this date, Lou Botticelli, great guy, thanks Lou, he stopped the bleeding. 
with a dirty sock. But again, he was one always pushing, work harder, do an extra rep, you know, get locked in, right? I still have a year of eligibility. Rondo. Football is more than just a game. Not only does it allow student athletes to continue their athletic career, but it inspires them to pursue academics and career aspirations. These players also had excellent mentors in Coach Lazardi and Rondo, who always strived to set their team up for success on and off the field. He drove himself, uh, the coaches, and the players. And, and honestly, it made me a better coach. I respected him because he reminded me like my father. Like, he was like the second father for me. One of the most, I, am, I don't care what his record says, one of the most brilliant football minds I've been around. I think a big part of, you know, was that he was so smart that sometimes he probably would like overthink things, but he could watch a football play one time and tell you what all 22 positions on the field did right, what they did wrong, what their first step was, what their read was. I mean, he was just a really, he had a phenomenal memory too. He was a hard ass, he was, and me and him butted heads a lot. Um, but when you're looking in hindsight now, you see it wasn't all about football. He was preparing me for life. And, you know, you go through tough times in life and, and they're always there to not just coach you through, through a practice or a game. You know, they're, they're there to help you out uh, no matter what, so. I talked to Rondo about it all the time. I said, you gave me the chance to play college football, you know, because if not for you guys, I probably wouldn't have, man. You know, I've always been grateful and appreciative of that. And that's pretty much how I ended up here. I'll always be grateful to Pace and to Coach Asardi, especially, um, for kind of, re you know, giving me a chance to play football when I didn't think, you know, it was for me anymore after I left Stony Brook. Something that, that Coach Rondo says to me, even nowadays when I see him, thank you for taking a chance on us. And um, I have to say to him, thank you for taking a chance on me. Um, it was, it was a remarkable experience, and uh, that, that one season that I played for Pace is something I'll never forget. I just really like seeing a group come together, right? You've got all these guys who are from all parts unknown, at different backgrounds, different locations, and then to watch those guys figure it out. And uh, that's the coolest part. 20 years later, I'm still hanging out with the same group of guys still breaking chops like we were in the locker room 20 minutes ago. So that's kind of the things where, then they say it all the time when you watch guys, oh, I miss the camaraderie, the, the road trips. Yeah, the seven hour bus ride sucks, but the stories that we have from these days going back, I can remember it like it happened yesterday, vividly. I know Brian had this thing with the Pop-Tarts. It's a meatball. I used to go to 7-Eleven, and I would get a box of Pop-Tarts and two apples. Because you want a little carbs, you want a little sugar, you know, like you don't want it something heavy for breakfast. So I would eat, and I would distribute the Pop-Tarts. I wouldn't eat all eight of them, despite what people say. Um, but at one point, I would, you know, you had that little foil wrapper, and I would be down to my last Pop-Tart, and I would crumple it down, and I would say, I'm, I'm here to kick ass and eat Pop-Tarts. And I'm all out of Pop-Tarts. It's about keeping the memories. The rest is history. The perfect snap, perfect hold, kick was good, and we ended up Winning the game by three, defense did an excellent job uh, in that last series. And uh, it ended up being a moment for me that I will always remember. Larry Pitascalza was inducted in the 2022 Pace Athletics Hall of Fame and is arguably the best all-around football player in Pace history. In a career that spanned from 1997 to 2001, he was one of the most explosive players in the country. Following his senior season, Pete Escalza was named Don Hansen Gazette D2 All-American as both a running back and special teams performer. He was later named Specialist of the Year in 2001. He finished his career as a two-time All-American, All-Conference selection, and three-time offensive MVP. He blossomed here. I mean, and when we needed yardage, he was the guy we went to. Screen passes, flare passes, you know, running the sweep, that, that was our bread and butter play. Give it to Larry. And he always made something happen. He made the offensive line guys look good because he was a talented kid that he could, you know, get away from a potential tackler. So he, he was excellent. Um, phenomenal football player, one of the best football players I think I've ever played with, top to bottom. Just 
Unbelievable athleticism, speed, quickness. Really, really good football player. He'd pull through and he, he worked his tail off. And uh, I really, you know, Larry did a phenomenal job. And uh, I was pr I'm proud of him for being in the Hall of Fame. He deserves it. Wherever you were, you had 65 buddies. And, uh, you know, that's the stuff you miss the most. The locker room, the joking around, making fun of each other, that kind of stuff, you know? I happen to have about five or six best friends from college. And it's all because of this program, this blood, the sweat, the tears, things like that. Football is more than just a game. Uh, I know for us, it's, it's created a bond that'll last forever. It's unlike anything, that feeling running on the field, getting ready to, to, to play with your teammates, it's, it's the best feeling ever. No matter where you came from, who you are, black, white, Spanish, 95% of the people wanted uh, to play football. It just keeps getting better and better. The athletes are bigger, better, faster, smarter, you name it. From top to bottom, it's, uh, it's fun to watch. We had a reason to believe that we were going to win in any 10 championship because of the team that we've had, uh, the talent that was on it, um, the, the, the mentality of the team as well. We can do this thing as long as we continue to push each other, which we did in practice. You know, iron sharpens iron and we were going at it. You know, we're talking arguments, debates, fights, like it was full on brawls out there because of the intensity and the passion that we had because we knew we can get to the ultimate goal and that was putting a ring on a finger. 60 guys looking down the field in the same direction and that was, you know, to hurt people and to win a game. I mean, it, it was it was pretty intense. It, it, it was awesome. Coach Sardi was so good because he believed in his players and, he, and we believed in him. Our belief in ourselves and the, our players' beliefs in each other uh, translated to uh, um, you know, playing at our highest level and having the successes that we had. Pace football is, has this aura. For the, those of us that played for Pace, it's because of how we grind it every day. From our, our uneven practice field with patchy grass and um, to the goose stuff that was on the field to our, our, our weight room that wasn't up to par for most programs. You know, that's, that's what defined us. We made the best of what we had, which is what we did on the field also. I don't know if we worked harder than anybody else, but we believed we worked harder than everybody else. When you're tough and you go 110%, you can over, it overshadows athletic ability. You know, it's heart. And that's, I think that's the, the, the I think that's my legacy, is that I brought a lot of heart to the program. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm very, very thankful you know, for, for being able to do that. So. I'm proud of my affiliation with this university. I'm thankful for this affiliation with this university. Um, I thank the people that saw fit to, to put me in the position of, of head coach and give me the opportunity to meet some of the greatest people that I've ever known. And uh, I know it's hard, I get emotional about this a little bit, but I, just, I love these guys. It's nice to see the program progressing and getting in the right direction, and we're happy as alumni to support it. If we can help enhance the lives of these young kids that are here um, by, by instilling that tradition into them so that can enhance their lives 20, 30, 40 years down in the future, then, then I'm doing my part in giving back. So that's why I'm here. I want them to have a, a feeling of accomplishment and growth. I want them to achieve. I want them to learn how to, uh, you know, attack the challenges of life. It makes me proud to know that I'm a part of a, this program. I do feel a part of it, and it's awesome to see it grow. And I, you know, I, I wish the best for the program, obviously, now. I want Pace Football to continue to grow. I do. All the sweat and the blood and, and the work and getting up at 5 in the morning and watching the film. And yeah, we feel like we had something to do with it, right? And it's important to us that this stuff is here. When I go into the field house, uh, you know, like that, that to me, is that, like you said, that layer of jealousy is just, it's amazing what they have. It's real, the Jumbotron, like that stuff is, is amazing and they deserve it. This is really cool. I love taking my son here and, and you know, it's proud to show him around and, and show him what it's all about, you know? I, I'm happy for everything that the university has done and, and has right now. Um, I'm not bitter or anything like that because it wasn't there when I was there, because what was there when I was there was enough. I think he does a good job. These guys look like they play hard for him. And I hope they take some of these lessons that they learned here in college 
out to the real world like some of us have. Rondo has a great understanding of that and he knows that to be a successful football player you have to have the intrinsic life values that will make you successful in life as well. It's kind of like a trick, right? You get them ready for life through something that they think is a game. So it's a big practice for a way bigger thing. Lessons that you're going to learn are going to impact your life, your marriage, your relationships, your work environment, how, how, you're, how you're an employee, how you're a leader in, in, in life. So stick to it and, and, and stay there and, and, and all the failure and the adversity is going to help you, right? Make time for um, yourself and three, don't overdo it, same sentence because there's a lot to do. There's even more to do now than it was when I was going. A lot more programs, a lot more clubs and organizations, a lot more things you can be a part of. It's important that you find a balance between football, social life, and academics. The worst day on the football field is better than the best day at work. Stay playing football. You have your whole life to work. If you want to be a part of this team and a successful team, it, you, have to, you have to put in the time and every, every second you got, you got to give all your effort. Like think about what you went through. Like every single play of every single practice, you're on the ground. Life knocks you down. It does and you gotta get back up. And that's life, that's every day. Because if we thought today was gonna be worse than yesterday, we wouldn't get out of bed. You're not supposed to get it all right right away. You gotta work for it. You know, things take time. If you're consistent, you will find progress. First of all, be yourself. The, the greatest thing that they need to do and focus on is, is um, who they are when no one's looking. Secondly, enjoy what you're doing, which means you can have lighthearted moments on the field, in the classroom, on the chalkboard. You, you got to enjoy what you're doing, and it's just, and you can still win. You know, that doesn't take away from anything else, but you got to enjoy what you're doing and, and have fun with it. You cannot put your pads on at 30, 40 years old and go lay somebody out. Like, it's just, so why you can, stick with it. It's going to be hard, but it, it'll be worth it, you know? And, Again, I have, I have friends that are like brothers, like teammates that like, they take a bullet for you, you know, and, and vice versa. Don't give up on it. Cherish every moment because it, it, it goes fast and uh, there will be nothing like this time. Nothing. There will be nothing that will replicate the relationships and the camaraderie and the time that you're having right now. As I got older, I, I, I realized, you know, you know those, those three to five years, depending on you know, how long you're in school and whatever, are, are gonna wind up being the best, best years of your lives. You know? Just enjoy the moment where you're at and, and just take advantage and soak it up. Cause like, you know, 20 years later, we're still, a lot of us are good friends and we're all proud and, and to come back and, and just, you know, build those relationships and have fun doing it. If you stick it out with the four years at pace, I guarantee you're gonna have a better work ethic. You're gonna be stronger mentally and physically and you're gonna have a family. If that's the biggest thing, first and foremost. If you work hard, good things are gonna happen. I, I, I firmly believe that. It'll be over before you know it. I love Pace, and, and Pace gave me an opportunity to keep playing football. Pace gave me an opportunity to go to college. When I was a kid, I never thought I'd be in college, to be honest with you, based on where I, from what I came from. And Pace gave me that opportunity, so I will never turn my back on pace. Those four years were an incredibly defining portion of my life and I wouldn't change it for anything. There's a respect there, there's a respect of the reason why every time I see every, any one of them uh, coach, right? It's, it's not, uh, it's, it's my, hopefully they understand that, right? It's my respect to them for everything they've done for me and, and my teammates, you know? And um, just, Again, if, if, it's, if it's to my teammates, you know, thank you for showing up every day, giving it all you got. Have, I have the respect for you, you have the respect for me. Um, it's, it's four years I'll never forget, and it's because of you guys. You know, you always say you want to go back, and it's not because, you know, you're sweating your ass off for nine hours a day in, in the summer heat. It's because you wanted to be around those guys, so. Some of my best friends in life, hopefully forever, um, so thank you.